you look so beautifully awesome from where I stand. I want to bless the Lord because of you. Um, I want to bless the Lord again for this chance. Uh, and to start by saying that my name is Peter Karuri. I am born again. I am a son in the house in the name of Jesus Christ. I belong to a youth network called Ablaze. <laughs> Amen. If you didn't know them, now you have heard them. And we thank the Lord. We are just serving the Lord there effortlessly. We know it is not of our own, but it's the Lord's grace and anointing. Amen? Amen. Yes, so that is me. For the very first time again to stand here. Wow, when I was here. <laughs> uh, I know you have expectations, but I pray that may the Holy Spirit meet your expectations. Uh, you know, uh, two things can happen when you are here for the very first time. You may forget everything. You may go blank. But I want to, I want to thank the Lord who cannot forget, who cannot go blank. So be sure that you listen to him who cannot forget and who can always meet your expectations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Greet your neighbor and tell them, Peter greets you in the name of Jesus. Uh, yes, so uh, that's me, and I hope for the few uh, minutes that we are going to be here, we shall listen and hear of the Lord. Amen. Ask them again, are you expectant of the Lord? Yeah, so if they said, that is well and good. Um, I want us to start by reading the word of God from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 16. My assignment is very simple, to bring you the word of God. And the Lord who waters, the Lord who brings about sprouting and the generation will cause the seed of his word to do good works in your hearts. For he says that uh, his word cannot return to him empty. It must accomplish all that he has purpose it to accomplish. So believe that that is the word of God and it will do what he wills. Uh, is it up there on the screen? Can we read together? Uh, three, two, one, go. When Jesus came to the region of Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? We can pause there. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we want to thank you. We want to thank you because of your word. Your word is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged spirit sword. It penetrates to dividing of soul and spirit of joints and marrow. We pray, God, that may your word accomplish your work in our hearts. May your word restore and reconcile us to you. You spoke to your disciples and you told them that the very words I speak to you are spirit and life. Holy Spirit, we pray that we may have life today. We pray that your spirit, God, may rest upon us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Attend to every need of the young and old in this sitting and in this congregation. Meet them because you know them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Uh, the title of my message or of our message today is the identity of a believer. The identity of a believer. And just a background, I was asking myself, because I'm from this or in this generation, that in a world of today, a world full of uh, a lot of moral decadence, a lot of uh, falsehood and heresies, uh, a lot of every kind of falsehood and indoctrination. And I'm a believer, me being part of the believer congregation, uh, I have to be very careful. I have to be uh, very cautious of what I subscribe to. I have to be very careful of what I endorse, what I promote, and what I support. Uh, because there's a lot of things that are happening around. And therefore, we as believers, we must guard our identity at all costs. We must be sure to guard who we are at all costs. In the book of God, Proverbs 4.23, the Bible says that uh, I can read. I hope my speed will match the speed of our able media team in the name of Jesus. 
Uh, the Bible says that above all else, guard your heart, for from it flows the issues of life. So this is the responsibility of a believer. Being born again is not our work. It is the pure gift of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says this is not from yourself, but it is a gift of God. But this is our place to guard that what the Lord has entrusted us with. The bonus, if you were. The question, therefore, we are trying to answer this morning is, at the center of all this perversion amid all this worldliness, LGBTQ issues, all these cultic issues, all this kind of brainwashing and radicalization that is happening around, where is the believer? Where is the believer's identity? Is it still intact or has it sunk? That's a, a rhetorical question for you and me. Amen? Colossians 4.6. The word of God says that let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with the salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Uh, each person. So these are the, this is the word of God. And is it still in use, if I may ask you? Is it still practically applicable in you when you open your mouth to speak? Do you check your speech? Do you check your words? Uh, a few, few days ago, we were doing believers' distinction. Uh, in, our, in our cell groups or in our cell meetings and there was a distinction uh, that we were saying that we would need to put filters in what we speak or what we say. Do you put filters in what you speak to one another or you're the kind of person after you speak you're like I don't know. That's again a rhetorical question but do we still mind our speech? Do we still mind what we speak to one another? Words are so powerful we cannot underestimate the power that is in the words that we speak. Do we still so are we still concerned and cautious of our conduct even among non-believers? Because the image or the context of our sharing today is actually our identity to non-believers. Because there is something that they should see and learn from us as believers. So are we still the light of the world as the word of God says? Do we still shine? Are we still the soul? Do we still have our taste and flavor? This is the big question. Who are you? Ask your neighbor, who are you? And demand an answer. They should not. It is not a rhetorical question. Demand an answer. They should not assume that everything is rhetorical. No, demand an answer. Who are you? Ask them. Who are you? So, if we can have Matthew again, where we started, uh, Matthew chapter 16, 13 to 16. Uh, this is Jesus demonstrating that this question is very valid. The question of our identity. Jesus was concerned and interested to know who the people, his, who the people were saying he is. Uh, I want to believe it's not because he never knew who he was. Uh, it's not because he was, you know, if, more often than not, if you ask your friend, what when I say, mimi ni nani? What when I say, mimi ni nani uko inje? There's a point you want to prove. Either you have some identity crisis somewhere, self-esteem issues, bonus if you were, or oh, there's a point you want to prove. You want acceptance or something. Bonus few. But uh, in my first class of SOL last Sunday, sorry, with all humility, bonus few. With all humility again. Bonus <laughs> few. You know, whatever you are full of, you cannot prevent. At one point, it will come out of you. So it is not me. Forgive me. Uh, th that is the reason why every one of you who has not attended that class should consider. We were taught that Jesus Christ... God affirmed him, he accepted him, and he had approved him to be his son and actually to be pleased of him and everything he did. So he was not looking for that. He was looking for something more. And what was he saying? What was he looking for? Number one, I think, that Jesus wanted to communicate something. He wanted to make his identity clear. This is his inner circle. These are his disciples. This time he's not the crowd, but he's asking his disciples, who do people say that I am? Actually, he's narrowing it down. Who do people say I am? They start giving answers. Some say Elijah. Some say John the Baptist. Some say one of the old prophets. But again, he says to them, but what about you? What about you? What about you? But then the answer they had given about what the other people say about to some extent, they, they had some truth in it because when they were saying about the, John the Baptist or about Elijah, uh, it's because somewhere uh, the Pharisees or the, the, the Jews believed that before the Messiah returns, Elijah will come first, bonus few. And you see Jesus in, in the scriptures telling them that Elijah 
has already come but you have not received so they were it's a max stand we can justify we can give them half max while you come a part half sindo you were the john the baptist because there were some things they could observe from jesus walk and conduct that were similar to those of john the ba the baptist so they, yes you are elijah and then you are all these yes they were one of the old prophets they could be right but those are them how about you that really hit different when someone ask you when i say my view how about you how about you jesus wanted to make sure that his identity is clear first to his disciples that this is who i am because when they believed him or the, when they knew him they were able to accept him and believe in him because the first the first step towards believing it is knowing when you know when as you the bible says in john 8:32 that you shall know the truth and the truth shall do what and again how shall they hear how shall they believe if they have not heard you hear you receive you know you believe and then you are set free bonus if you eh? point number 2 the reason why i thought jesus was asking them this way uh, is because there's always something truth about what people say about us or about our identity it was not going to influence him in any way really but it's because there's something that people see that they can attach to what they say you are they have seen you do something or they have seen you act like this there's something true about what people say about our identity our identity communicates it communicates to people something those people who are around us it is a testimony to them our identity preaches you know what before you can open your mouth to speak or to preach to someone first and foremost your dress code will preach to them get me right i'm not saying you dress expensively or anyhow but how you appear they say the first impression last long as into how you appear i don't have a problem with how we appear here bonus few but if your appearance will make someone to believe the lord if it is your dress code that will make someone to know that this god is smart then dress well i'm talking about decency i'm talking about uh, being smart i'm talking about decorum and uh, and just grooming proper personal grooming bonus few that is what will speak when you're in the interview and people look at you and they are like oh umekuja you are saying you want to be our hr you are the one who will be manning the human resource here and being in charge of them and this is how you are dressed so they will be you want them to be dressing like you that is not anywhere it is not a secret to you it's not a true story i'm just thinking because when you dress they said you will be addressed the way you dress bonus if you eh? and i know we have all the kind of sayings and i start by saying in our world truth is no longer absolute truth is relative it is how i feel i should behave it is how i feel i should dress that is wrong it is not biblical i am the way the truth and the life if you know any other separate truth paul would tell them if they come preaching any other gospel let them be what let them be a cast so i'm submitting to us brethren this very morning that we have to be mindful of our conduct it is what is seen first before what is spoken it is what we see first before what we can speak one as few Uh, what is this identity what is this animal called identity to me she took them up what is this am i talking about uh, by definition this is not my own definition uh, i'm not that sharp again but anyway <laughs> do not think also um anyway identity what is identity identity by definition is the fact of being who you are ask your neighbor again who are you <laughs> I, I know that question is very difficult again you went into an interview room and they ask you tell us about yourself tell us who are you kama ujai juma ulimi unaanza hapo because you are like what do they want to know uh who are you it is the fact of being who you are it is the sense of who we are as individuals and as members of social groups it also refers to the sense of how others uh perceive us or label us and people label us most often they're not from what they see us uh if they say that you are kind it's because they have seen kindness from you if they say that you are rude eh they have seen that also 
Uh, so this saying of, do not judge me, oh, I don't know. They have seen it. Please allow them. They have seen that in you. Ask yourself, what is this that I'm presenting to them? Because the problem we have today is we are serving people something, one thing, and we want them to see us in a different way. It cannot happen. Oh, let's care up. It cannot happen. What we do to people is what they will label us. So easy, if you met a stranger there and you speak kindly to them, they will say, I met a very kind lady by the name of Candy. Allow me to use Candy. I met, yes, that is Candy. <laughs> I met a very kind gentleman by the name of Wanjala. Yeah, Wanjala is a gentleman, if you didn't know. I met a very, a very, a gentle lady. But the gentleness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, so ladies also should be gentle. Bonus fear? We are in the youth service. Bonus fear? You see, one of the things that I, I was ever told is that I'm looking for a gentleman. A gentleman. Are you a gentle lady? Bonus fear? We are not shifting, we are not shifting things, but we are speaking as it is. Bonus fear? Hallelujah. You still love me? The point I'm saying that gentleness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and every person, regardless of the agenda, or sexual orientation, they should be ja gentle. It is not from me. I'm a Galatians 5.22. See, you So be gentle. You see, we have attached so much, uh, so much attention to gentle, to, to men being gentle. It almost sounds uh, like the same, like when you are when a, man, a man, you should be gentle. I agree. But also when you are a lady, you should be gentle. Uh, ladies, Mrs. how are you? I felt it good to remind you. Bonus fear. Amen. <laughs> Let us be gentlemen and gentle ladies as we go to heaven. Amen? There are kind of identity we may be attached to. The gender, uh, you are a man or you are a male, uh, maybe uh, the aptitude or the height, the stature, you are tall, short, whatever. Those are godly, uh, uh, godly that God created those. Uh, people may attach also from our ethnic background. Uh, you come from whatever region you come from. That is a good identity. It's a good identity, but that is not what we are talking about today. We are talking about the identity of a believer, born as if you were. And, and this is the question, or the identity will answer the question that who are we and who are you? And Mark you, we must ask ourselves this question and answer it satisfactorily, answer it to the fully. If we are going to remain relevant and effective in our faith and work of the ministry, we must ask ourselves, we say we are a believer, who are we? Who is a believer? How is a believer supposed to conduct themselves? How is a believer supposed to, to carry themselves? And part of why we are tackling this subject is because it, it, it burdens my heart when someone who is a believer says in their heart that I don't care what they say, I don't care what they take me to be, I do not care so long as I'm doing what I like, so long as I'm doing what, that is a don't care attitude. We were taught by Pastor George from City Lighters, let us mind our attitude more as if you were. And Mark you, by the way, the Bible says that we shall see as we continue that there is something that should reflect our walk and conduct. So people do not just label you anyhow. They do not just wake up and decide that we are a pastor. Uh-uh. We are a heavy. Uh-uh. We are a And people tell you, hi, pastor, or hi, I don't know. There is someone who told us, Akienda Mahali, people think that she is a doctor. Why? Anaka daktari. I don't know how doctors look like. You may want to tell me. Anaka pastor. I don't know how they look like, but at least I know Pastor Mwashi. I don't know. I don't know. I do not know. But people will, by the way, wanakuwaga ukweli. Watu wakisema unaka hivi, unaka hivi. So look at yourself in the middle of the word of God and ask yourself, where have I lost this mark? So Kenya wanasema uko. I know it has been said of us. Every person here, kuna venye unasikiaka wakionge uko. Na unasema, ah, sasa mimi sinina jijua. Ah, ah, hujijui. Ask yourself again. Ask yourself again. What is this? Are you serving people? Born as if you So what does it mean to be called children of God? I want us to go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse 12 to 13. That is the word of God. Can we read it together also? But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, 
nor of the will of man, but of God. Born as he were, and behold, that which is born of God overcomes. This is a very famous uh, scripture, and we know it. And it, to me, it defines who are we as believers, our identity, that we are children of God. So our identity is not dependent. If you, if, if you, if you work in, that we were not born out of natural descent or according to human decision and understanding. That's why you should be very careful attaching your identity to earthly to earthly things because you shall limit the power that God has bestowed in your identity as a child of God. What else you mean? So you are not just biologically or the way, I do not know, but I feel that we were born of God. We, became, we were of God before we became of our parents. Biologically, we were of God, born as few. And the Bible says we were not born as per the husband's or human decision, by the way. So as you work with Yamua, you may forget time. God knew that Kimu atakuwa hapa, Dia atakuwa hapa. Yes, you may look like your parents. I'm okay with that. Genetically, it is good. We bless the Lord. Others, you may not look like your father. You may not look like your, your mom and the other real parents. It is okay. But, it is okay by the way. <laughs> but as you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to speak about logic, but it happens. Never any wow, by the way. It happens. I don't want to say a personal story, but I used to wonder, anyway. But the point is, <laughs> that's biologically, but before you can start saying, the Bible says that he created us out of our own image and likeness. It is not like ufanana, like no likeness and image it is to portray the substance of god it is like this is a seed of god do we portray that we are the children of god that is our identity we are born of god and behold that which is born of god overcomes even our faith so i want to call upon us to to think so much highly of god think so much of think of the higher things of the upward calling where our inheritance and where our identity is because we are believers. We are children and sons of God. Why do we need to become aware of our identity? Is there a need to know who we are? Is there a need really to know who, whose children are we? And I think, yes, there is need. Uh, number one is that there is need to know identity because we are able to take our position in the kingdom of God. Tell your neighbor, take your position. Or rather, ask him now, have you taken your position? Napia wakujibu. Have you taken your position? Uh, Daniel, if you can have Daniel 11.32, if you can have Daniel 11.32, uh, the word of God says this. Can we read together also? Today we are preaching together, Sindo. Uh, come on, we're going to express something again. Sorry, but we are preaching together. I three, two, one, go. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know they are God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. We can repeat that part B of that verse. But the people who know they are God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. The people who do what? I'm telling you, exploit is for those people who know they are God. See, Kiramutu, do you know that you are God? Because there is something that comes when you know your father, that when you know who God is. And, and, and you cannot know this just by being preached to you about him and his identity. It is a personal experience. It's a personal journey that you walk together as you discover and know God. Actually, as God introduces himself to you. Bonas Fiwe. It is not that there was no preaching. The church was still vibrant in the time of Saul. And in fact, that was his work to carry them and drag them to the synagogues and to persecute them. The message was there. But until he met with Christ personally. So the knowledge of God as children, it's a personal experience. Bonus fewer. Again, a, 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 an otherly analogy. Kwenye mebi mkowengi. I don't know how many siblings you are, but I know kwetu tukwa kapi. But do you think kuna mtoto yeah, we are two in our family. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Amen. For the ones who are asking. When I swear, like me and my sister, there's no one who is more, 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 more son or more daughter of my father. Like, hakuna mtu ni mtoto zaidi yangu. Like, we, are, we all are children. We all have equal rights. Bona asifiwe. So, when maybe my sister comes in, ni mtoto wa mamangu, ni mtoto wa babangu. When I come in, I'm still the son. And the same love should have, kwa sababu, we are the same level of, sisi ni watoto, muna get? Sisi ni watoto, hakuna mungine ni mtoto zaidi ya mungine. We are all children. Bona asifiwe. I don't want to mention a saying that goes in my mother tongue. Hakuna mtoto na kitu ingine hapo. But we are all equal. Bona asifiwe? I don't want to start speaking, speaking Greek. But we are all equal. So, because we were all born of that. So we have an experience. Personally, we identify with our fathers. That is the same case. Sisi wote. We are children of God. And we should identify personally. So it's so personal. It's so, so indiv- to us, an individual level. The knowledge or the concept of knowing you are God and your father. Those who know they are God, they shall do exploits. There are some things we will only be able to do when we know who we are in the Lord. There are some things, and that is why uh, the Bible says, is it in Hosea 4, 6, that my people do what? Perish because of? Yes, that is knowledge. And, 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 and Paul writing to Corinthians, I think, is it chapter 7? He's telling them, I do not want you to be ignorant of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, do not be ignorant. Knowledge is needed for you to do some things in the kingdom of God. Some things will only be done by those who know who they are. Because when we know who we are, then we shall know whose we are. When we know who we are, we shall know whose we are. Exploits are for those who know they are God again. And what are these exploits? We can see some of them. There are so many in the book of God. But we can start with Luke chapter 10 and verses 19. Luke chapter 10 verses 19. Uh, the word of God says, help me read again, one, two, three. Behold, I give you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is the word of God. That I give you what? I give you authority to do what? To trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the and nothing shall by any means do what? Hurt you. And, and Satan even knows this. Satan and Ajua, that's why he tempted Jesus with this question, that through yourself and the angels shall, they shall receive you. You shall not be hurt. But the point I'm bringing here is that we have been, as sons, as children of God, we are not just powerless and helpless children. We have been given power and authority. Not just over serpents and scorpions. <laughs> In a sound funny, scorpions. Not just over serpents and scorpions, but over enemy, bonus here, and over the enemy, that is the devil, bonus here. So if you know that, then you shall be able to behave better even in the kingdom of God, in the how you your faith will be shaped better, your declarations will be shaped better because you have power and authority. I want to give you an example, uh, maybe a personal example. There was a time uh, I had a group of friends who had gone for a sleepover, bonus fuel, sleepover. Let me define sleepover before you can crucify me. <laughs> bonus fuel, sleepover. Amen. Amen. Sleepover is most important. It's good to define. A sleepover, now in the context what I'm sharing, we had gone for, it was a, a a subcommittee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Candy. Uh, it was a subcommittee of intercessory subcommittee from our school. So we had gone for somewhere, a night vigil, to just, that time we were not, we were not fasting, we were feasting. <laughs> 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 hey. I never thought I can make people laugh when I'm speaking serious things. <laughs> when I'm speaking about serpents and scorpions, and people just laugh. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Amen. Amen. So we had gone for that. I can laugh. We had gone for that that occasion. We were, were how many? We were were around five. eh? We were around five. Uh, Three gentlemen and two ladies. Uh, And during the night as you were conversing, you were evaluating how the prayer is doing and how everything in school is doing. After Tumekula, one lady, Akagonjeka, and it was funny because 
ni usiku it was around 3 tu na huko usiku katikati mi hoya i, I stay sijuagi hospital sorry again i'm betraying my career but i was sick when the hospital is happy because i i really visit them to the glory of god bonus fie so i was like nelly amegonja kana ni usiku katikati what shall we do and she's behaving in a manner sijui ni kichwa ina muuma sana sijui she was almost collapsing i was tensed being the senior most person who was in that group i was like they are looking up to me nifanye nini sina madawa sijui hospital ni usiku sijui ni i was blank i was stranded what do i do but i remembered something i remembered that the bible says if you agree something here on earth your father shall do it in heaven that if by faith you believe you shall be healed and that is what we did i just told them we may not be 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 pastors we may not be anything we may not be experts in this but let us believe for her healing we prayed and she was healed and she was okay bonus few and i know you have you have your different experiences you have your different uh, examples which are okay and valid again on me again one time one night it happened that i got a flu was it a flu or a cold whatever it was but it was so stubborn that i could not sleep uh, i would cough until i would choke i would feel like i'm choking and i was not alone i was with my roommate and my roommate was called by then david kamau bonus fear <laughs> yeah let me be so clear <laughs> david kamau bonus fear <laughs> he was my classmate and my roommate i i told you you will whatever i say here will be used against me so i'm very careful yeah my roommate was david kamau so i have come from from school so late but i cannot sleep i am coughing aloud i'm sneezing my chest is congested um i cannot do this anymore and it was after like uh one hour or so of struggling and of trying to to beat that i was like nini ni hii inanisumbua so nikaamka juu nilikuwa nalala silali i'm coughing i'm coughing you know how you it can be so disturbing and how irritating mko na mtu and then you are just coughing eh uncontrollably you're just sneezing and it is in pain so i was like i woke up i sat on the bed and i was like what is this i declare that i will have sleep in the name of jesus whatever it is let it pass with speed and go where it's supposed to be because this is not the destination so i want also to tell you whatever you are passing through the problems tell them that you are not their destination but if they must pass let them pass because again the bible says count it all joy when you pass all through this it is good to suffer for the sake of christ born as few but again do not possess that because that is not our inheritance the bible says that we shall eat the good of the land and we shall witness so born as few that every good promise and blessing is ours but before you can handle that good blessing you want lazima uhad anyway and such problems or such a kind of health hiccups are what will stand the new born as few So you have power you have authority tell your neighbor you have power you have authority But the question is are you aware that even you can do that are you aware that you have that power because again if you do not know you will only remain helpless you will only remain if you too umegonjeka homa but you don't know there is before you can go to a doctor you can pray before you can i'm not saying you don't go to the hospital go but before you can do that pray because we say that doctors treat but god does what That is why he's Rafa, the Lord who heals us. Bonus few. So, we may know all the medicine. It is good to know medicine and encourage those who are trying to find their careers. Medicine is a good cause is a good thing to know. But again, it is God because God is supreme and above our biology and all our anatomy. God holds the sole power to healing and making our health good in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Beloved we have been given power and authority power to do exploits power to advance the kingdom of God power to serve God and to serve one another yes we serve God and we serve one another praise the lord point number 2 is that we are able to relate better with the father when we know our identity we are able to relate better with our father uh, we can have romans chapter 8 verse 15 we can have romans Yeah, chapter 8 verse 15 can we read together 1 2 3 go 
For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Uh -huh. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children. Uh -huh, the next. And if children then, yes. heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified. The spirit we have received is the spirit of sonship. It is the spirit of adoption. It is not the spirit to fear. It is not the spirit to cow away and fall back. It is the spirit to forge forward. It is the spirit to advance. When we know our, that God is our father, yes, when we know that God is our father, uh, leave alone the experience you have your other, with your other fathers. It may not help us here. Because they may not have lived to the standard expectation of God to demonstrate his fatherhood to us. Bonus fewer. I'm saying the identity of God as our father. We call him God the Father. Bonus fewer. Then when we know that he's our father, and a lot goes into that, calling God father. Uh, father. God is our father. You know, when you say that God is our father, there's a lot of things that shift and change in your, in your faith and in your believing or in the way you think and regard of God. You know, God is not just any other authoritarian seated. See Prince Poa High School, here you? Teacher on duty, boarding master. Yes, we used to fear those people. See, yeah, when you make to just waiting for you to make a mistake, one as fear. No, I used to love mine in case they are watching. But anyway, I'm saying. <laughs> My mathematics teacher, the point I'm making here is whatever you have in mind, it is not what God the Father is. God is more than that. And I was saying that Father comes with a responsibility. Father comes with a, 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 an identity, with a relationship. Father comes with a this is how you relate better when you know that God is your father. I, I was saying that when you know God is your father, it's not just any other authoritarian. Hey, Charu, umechelewa kazi, ama in charge. Ameka tu hapo. Ufanya tuka mistake kamoja. And then they fire you or they punish you. That is not God. Yes, he may do that, but that is not God. Before he can become all that judge and rational judge, he is a father. Bona as if you were. And a father corrects. A father guides, a father loves, and a father gives instruction. That is our father. You can trust him as a father. So I was saying a lot of things will change. We shall be able to relate with God better. We shall be able to worship him better because we are worshiping now our father. We are relating with our father. Praise the Lord. And when we approach God, we approach him with the confidence. I, I know there are some of our fathers, but I think they are not here that I'm saying our, your biological father. We used to fear our biological father to some extent. Those who are those ages and apple, I'm not. But I'm saying, Kuna ungeski ata mukienda kuchaza na bestiako una muliza baba yako ako. Do you know baba ni nani? Uda muliza mama yako ako tamuza baba ako baba yako ako. To kifanya vina baba yako. Cause it used to come with such fear. When I fear, you identify. Thank you. Clap for Pastor Moshi. He's identified. <laughs> yes, we used to fear them. We used to. There would be no relationship or if there was anything for fathers, it was fear. They were the disciplinarian. They were the, the custodian of the law of the family. Ama uskia kikila familia kila nyumba yiko na constitution yake uku. Uku kwangu nasema ni kwangu, karoli. Samwati kifika. Uku umengia, what has fear? Yes, so, it is not that we are able to relate. It's not that example. It is the example of a father that is able to relate with us. There was a, another time I was marveled at how my other friend would relate with their father, like a friend. Eri ni kamuliza, uyo ni baba yako ama ni kazini yako? For real, I was shocked because of how they could relate at a personal level. Ana mugade na muambia, and this is how you go about this. So it was such a colorful, and that is 
the example that the Lord we should have with our Father. We are able to approach his throne with confidence, to approach him in prayer with peace, to approach him with an expectation that he loves us and he knows us. And that is in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. We can read it together again. 1 John, 1 John 5, 14. I can start reading as we continue. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears, he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Praise the Lord. That this is the confidence. We know we are going to our father. He says that if your earthly fathers are able to give you what you ask for, imagine if you ask your father mkate ya kulete, yokiti miandiko hapo kwa baibo. Simunajua ni gani? Umuitishe fish akuleta hiyo kitu ingine miandiko hapo. You would be like, eh? Kwani baba yangu wa sikiagi? Ni nini mbaya? Umuitisha mkate, amekuwakotea mawe hapo inje. It would like be. Uende kwa mama, mom, is dad okay? Bona sifuye? Imagine, <laughs> that, is, that is the same way. So God, the, fa the fatherhood of God, he gives us an example of our responsible earthly fathers. I will use responsible earthly fathers. That if we can relate with them at that level and ask them of something they will give us, how much more? How much more? Just think, how much more will our father give? This is the confidence that we know. If we ask anything, if we do what? Ask. Again, the Bible says you have not received because you have not Ask your neighbor, have you asked? Ama ni kutalalamikia tu kumungu haonagi shida zako. Na huombi. You know, you should be able to differentiate complaints and prayer. Uwe tu mebini kukomplain tu, grievances, right? And you have not even asked the Lord bonus. So, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. Again, we have a father who hears us. The problem again we are having in our 21st century is we have absent fathers. Fathers who are not there for their children, and if you are not there, you can hear your children. But we thank the Lord because in him we have a father who is able to hear us. Who is able to hear us. And not just hear, but we know if you ask anything according to his will, he shall do what? He shall give us. He shall give us. That is not me. See me in first, John. It is not me. It is the word of God that if we ask anything again according to his will, according to his will. So, pray and pray according to his will. That's what I can tell you. When you know God is your father again, you don't run away when you make a mistake. You don't run away. It's when he was as you are Ukiju mekosea? He. Unafanya hile kazi yote mzuri kufunika hii. Unafanya unachota maji. Unamekishua kama nigideri, meiva vizuri. Sa hizo kuna kitu limisa subui. So you want to cover up, to cover up. Or you want to run away, or you are afraid to come. But when you know God is our Father, we do not run away when we make a mistake. We go to Him. We go to Him. This is the concept of a prodigal son. The prodigal son reached a place and he was like, Yes, I have done this. I have squandered everything. That squandering is big. Squandering. He squandered everything. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, squandering. <laughs> He squandered everything. And he knew. Just like David would say in Psalms chapter 51, that I have sinned against you and against you alone. That it's me who have sinned. Again, I'm not blaming God. God unajua kama ningesoma. God kama unganilea. Ah, no, it is me. But again, I will go to my father. Even if he will punish me, even if he will display me because he does, he will also nurse me. He will also bandage me. He, will, he says that his yoke is easy. Bonus if you It's easy. It's easy. Again, tell your neighbor, easy. easy. Our God, he's interested with us. So even the correction that God gives us is the correction to, to restore us back to him. So when you feel like you have made a mistake, do not turn away from God. Run to God. Tell your neighbor, do not run away. Run to God. Run. Tell them again, run to God. He will always accept us back. He will always accept us back. And when we have this good fellowship with him, we shall learn of him, we shall learn from him, we shall continue learning his goodness, and we shall, we shall be able to please him because we are running to him. Number three, 
uh, is that we are able, again, when we know our identity, we are able to be better witnesses to non-believers. We are able to be better witnesses to non-believer. Matthew 5.16, if we can have it, Matthew 5.16, this is what the word of God says in Matthew 5.16. Can we, that one you will read. One, two, three. Let your light so shine before. So the first thing that you are doing, that your light should shine. Before who? Men. Men. I want to believe that that men, it is the people. Not just men or male. It is all people. Men. That they may see you are good. Underscore that. They may see you are good. Works. And do what? And glorify your Father who is in heaven. I want to admit and submit to us, brethren, that there will always be a place for good works in our faith. There will always be a place for good works in our faith and practice of our faith. So we should do good. Good works, by their works, lest I fall into a misunderstanding, good works does not mean that we are working, we are earning our salvation. Good works means that it is acting out our faith. It is obeying the Father. Bonus here. It is what I think James would call that not just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. For faith without action is dead. So this is the works I'm talking about. Do not, lest you think that I'm saying that you should work to earn yourself. No. It is by the grace, through faith and grace alone. It is the gift of God I said. But these works, that context, it means that the actions that you do, whatever you do, you should do so that the non-believers should see and glorify God. Again, these actions, they carry a bigger testimony about our identity than our words. Bonus here. I'm telling you for free that people will tend to label you or to call you by what they have seen you do, not what you keep telling them you are. If they see you doing otherwise, just like Jesus will tell the, 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 the people that just do what they say, do not do what they do, because they say one thing and they do some other thing. So it's what we do that we shall know them. Yeah, they would, they would, they would, they would, they would do all the manners of teachings, but again behave differently. But Jesus is saying that let us be doers of the word of God. So what you do is most importantly what people will, will preach to the people. It's what people will carry home. It's what people will take home. It's their takeaway. What they see you acting and doing. But again, I know that in in class four, I was told that um, verb, I'm a speaking. Speaking is a speaking is an action. Speaking is a verb, right? And a verb is a doing word. So also when you're speaking, you are doing word. You are doing something. I pray that this doing word will be the word of God. Bonus here. So even speaking is an action itself. So what you are speaking will matter also to the people around you. I pray that uh, our words will match our actions, that whatever we speak, we reflect in what we do. They must match. If you are going to be relevant witnesses, they must match. Bonus here. You may not necessarily preach the gospel by saying, repent, and this is the Lord says, but whatever you say, whatever you, you answer that junior uh, colleague at your workplace, whatever, whatever, just a simple thing, wakulize, wamekuja ni orientation. E laptop, and then you look at them like, oh, so you are the one who is taking after me. IT manager, you don't know. As in, bonus, yeah? I'm just saying that it will matter a lot how you answer again, how you tell them. I have suffered some time. Kuna time hey, it's like piano your example. But yes, because you don't, don't know something, bonus, yeah? and I'm telling you that will be permanent in your heart for the longest. Maybe you're in that organization or you remember that person. So I pray that. Let people remember us for a seasoned word, for a timely word. Let people remember us for kindness. Let people remember us for something good we did to them. Because these good works are possible. And these good works are our distinction. They are the marks of the believers we are talking about. Praise the Lord. Again in John 5, 36, Jesus will tell uh, the Pharisees again uh, that for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing bear witness about me, that the Father has sent me. Bonus fear. Your actions will reveal your identity. They were like, who are you? Who are you? And he was telling them, I have been telling you, but you're not listening. But even if you don't believe what I'm saying, then look at my works. Look at what I'm doing. 
Born as if you the very works the Father has given me bear witness of me. So that is a practical example of Jesus. Uh, good works are the fruits that we believers should bear. The good works actually are the fruits. The Bible says in Matthew 7, we can have that. I can see my time is up. I am just about to finish. Tell your neighbor, the preacher is about to conclude. Uh, uh, born as fear. In Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 20, the word of God says that, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Eh? You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from distors? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The Bible says that you shall know them by the year. And these are the works that we are saying. And by the way, these fruits are the ones we are saying we should all be gentle, born as if we are. Yeah, these, are, these fruits are found, in, <laughs> they are found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 20, 22, which we shall not read in the interest of time. That be gentle, have love, love. And I want you to think about love for a moment. What is love? God is love. Have you shown love? God had demonstra has demonstrated that love, that when you are still sinners, Christ died for us. We have also a responsibility to demonstrate the love of God to non-believers. Because if there is a tool that should be number one in our preaching, in our witnessing, should be love and the love of God. So in conclusion, I'm saying that fruits are produced by the mature trees. Wanna ask you? Eh, where's the panda? Leo, mtu wa machungwa. We expect to come matunda leo, sindo. Kukuna kitu netwa mche kwa kiswahili. Waswahili we zangu watani rekebisha niki kosea. Mche, siyo mtu liokoma. Mche ni kiwango kidogo chamea. Wanna ask you? Mti huwezi ukatoa matunda kwa kweli. Mti ndio watoa matu, matunda. So the question is, wewe ni mti ama wewe ni mti? Figuratively speaking again. But I want to admit that our salvation, our work with Christ is work in progress. That it is the word of God that is sanctifying us daily. It is God who is aligning us to his perfect will daily. So do not give up on yourself. You may be struggling with self-control. You may be struggling with love because the example you had about love is not what you, you expected or what you should show. You may be struggling with this, with issues in life in one area or another. And these things could be, in a way or another, blurring and tainting our image and our very identity that we are supposed to portray and put outside to the non-believers. Do not give up because God has not given up on yourself. Do not give up on you. Do not give up on God. Because God has not given up on yourself. And this is from Matthew 12, 20. The Bible says that a bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench, till he sends forth judgment unto victory. He shall, not, he shall not break a bruised reed. He shall not quench a smoking flax. Again, Psalms 103, verse 13 and 14. Yes, the word of God says, we can read together that one. As the father pities his children... So the Lord pities those who fear him. Can we have NIV, please? NIV. NIV. As the father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The next verse. For he knows we are formed. Sorry. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. So the Lord knows that we are weak. The Lord knows that we are limited. But I want to pray. We would find the grace in our times of weakness. We approach him with confidence to tap on his strength and to tap on his goodness and mercy to help us in times of need. So do not give up on yourself. Whatever it is, the Lord has compassion. The Lord is compassionate, full of mercy and love. He is Lord to anger and abounding in love and mercy. So may the Lord remember us. And may the Lord do us good. The final plea I want to pray is that you cannot have an identity if you are outside Christ. 
for you to have an identity of a believer, the point number one is to know God. We carry his image. We carry his identity. So the first thing is to know God. And how do we know him? It is believing and trusting in him. It is being born again. We say that we are born again. And actually, I am born again. Born as you, eh? Tell your neighbor, the preacher is born again. <laughs> yeah, that is important. That is important. And I know you are born again. You could be, you could not be. So this is open to us again. If you are there, you are wondering how can you become, can you regain your identity? How can you regain your image, the likeness that God created you? His arms are wide open. You can just run to him and he will receive you gladly like he received the prodigal son. He has not given up on you again. It does not matter how deep you are into your issues, into the issues of the one, God can receive you back and God can accept you as a son. And as a daughter born as free. So if you are there and you would like to be born again, as we bow down for a word of prayer, you can raise your hand and we have the minister of the word of God who will pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Is there such? Anyone who would like to receive Christ today? Born as free. In case at any point you feel you want to, you can see the leadership of this church or you can see anybody. You just tell them, I want to get born again. They shall lead you accordingly. Born as free. Uh, before I can pray, I want to thank the leadership of this church for allowing me to stand here. Uh, the leadership of Shiloh, Pastor Brian, uh, Pastor Beatrice, and every other person. I honor your anointing and your authority here. And also our bishop, Dr. James, James Kimani, Jimmy Kimani, sorry, and Reverend Alice. I honor them in all the leadership and protocols observed. God bless you all, wherever you are. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we give you thanks. We bless you for who you are in our lives. Thank you for reminding us that you are compassionate, that you are loving, that you are full of grace and mercy. Blessed be your name, God. We are approaching you with this confidence that whatever our needs are, whatever our requests are, whatever our challenges and struggles are, God, you have heard us and you will answer us. We bless you and we worship you. Be lifted high, be exalted because you are good. We are your children. Thank you for the privilege and right to become your children and sons. We love you and we bless you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord do you well. God bless you.